There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. This right here is you. You are in your late 50s and you can feel the grips of old age accompanying you, but you've accepted this and you welcome it with peace. You've done well throughout the years, running a convenience store which you branched into several stores that all performed exceedingly well. Once your children were born, you sold off your companies and your stocks, leaving enough money for you and your family to live and retire comfortably. Your children and your family became your number one concern, and you managed well. Both your kids are now teenagers, and today, you're watching your daughter's baseball match. Your chest tightens suddenly. You jolt, and your wife giggles. Did the strike scare you, hon? She chuckles. You hear her, and you try to force a smile, but... This isn't right. You feel your torso get hot. Why is it suddenly so fucking warm outside? Your eyes dart across the field looking for... What are you looking for? You know the sound came from the bat hitting the ball. You try to take a quiet, deep breath, but the tightness in your chest blocks it. You attempt another, and another, and you're no longer quietly breathing, but rather performing rapid short breaths, doing anything to get oxygen in. Honey... Honey, what's wrong? Her voice is distant. People are now standing up and screaming. Ah, fuck, it's loud. You can hear your wife's voice, but it's all but gone by this point. The screams as well are muffled. And finally, you feel yourself inhale. It's a nice, long breath. And that's when you realize you've been holding on to your wife's arm. Hard. You look up at her, and she's worried, but paints a look of relief when she looks into your eyes. Hey, you're okay. It's just a baseball game. You can hear her clearly. Your eyes still dart around the field, but things are slung back down again. You can breathe. The warmth you felt on your chest cools down. You let go of her arm as she rubs your hand calmly. Um, <laughs> sorry. You stammer out. I don't know what came over me there. Everything was just intense. You haven't been sleeping too well. She comments. How about we take the night off tonight? Maybe order some pizza? Open some wine? Yeah. Yeah, that... That sounds nice. You just experienced a panic attack. You've obviously had them before, but... Not as strong as this one. And these panic attacks will continue to happen to you. For the next five to eight months. Your wife was right. At the time being, you are sleeping less than usual. Instead of the standard eight hours, you're able to sleep for three, maybe four hours per night. Seven months have passed. Your panic attacks have not decreased. Sometimes it feels like they've just become a norm in your life. Your wife finally took you to a doctor who wrote a prescription for Celexa, but it wasn't working. After some time, you go to another doctor by yourself, who, upon hearing the information of your prescription, scoffs and says that the first doctor was wrong. Your Celexa prescription is canceled, and now you've been written another one for Prozac. That one doesn't work either. After several weeks, one night you go online, and you find that someone on Reddit says that their doctor recommends avoiding SSRIs. What? You tell this to your doctor the next day, and they scoff. Are you sure you're taking it daily? Are you taking it with food? You should be taking it with food. Are you drinking enough water? Maybe get some more cardio in your day. You answer their questions and they just write you another prescription. Zoloft. It doesn't work. You're not even surprised anymore, but the doctor doesn't believe you when you mention your complaints. You try going off of your medicine after reading a lot about side effects. One being trouble with sleep. Your wife wonders if sleep, or the lack of, is the cause behind all of this. And now, 
you've begun taking sleeping pills. Sometimes you take one more than you should, but getting eight hours of sleep has become a fantasy to you by this point. Even six hours would be nice. And now, you're forgetting where items are in your own house. At first, it was simple stuff. Can't find the bread, can't find the TV remote, etc. But today, today's different. Something's wrong, and you know it. You were watching TV as your wife was out running errands. You blink, and suddenly, someone's standing there. Right there, in the living room. But they, they were standing there. But no one's home. You don't even like watching TV anymore, but it's the only activity that doesn't require energy. But now, it feels like your eyes can't even focus on the screen. Characters and colors, they don't look right. Your chest tightens as your eyes look for the person in the living room, and breathing once again becomes difficult. Another panic attack ensues. You will eventually discover that you are suffering from symptoms of hypnagogic hallucinations. These, along with the panic attacks, do not stop. Time by this point is irrelevant. It has been, at least according to your wife, 13 months since this all started. You have been seeing another professional who performed multitudes of brain tests and scans and although it was difficult to pay attention, your wife was always there to help. Today, you and her sit down in his office. After lots of medical talk, the doctor only talks to your wife now, so you just zone out. Your wife begins crying. Five months. You have five months left. Your hunger is gone, and your body has decreased in mass from weight loss. You have lost the complete ability to sleep. You are now awake 24 hours, 7 days a week, and will continue to be endlessly awake for the next 5 months. The hallucinations have rampantly increased, and although you try to eat, your energy is gone. No more baseball games. No more errands. Your life consists of doctor visits, and now, waiting. You're bound to a wheelchair for the majority of the day, and often stare at a blank television screen. Your children have been informed of your fate, but you don't even recognize them anymore. You are surrounded by strangers who weep for you. It doesn't matter how much longer you have. Doctors have informed your wife to begin the final steps. You don't talk or even respond to touch anymore. On your strongest days, you can grunt out a single as a response to others. Your brain is riddled with dementia, and reality has been blurred for so long that you don't even recognize the panic attacks or the hallucinations. Your neck has also stiffened, and you cannot even turn your own head. The closest feeling of sleep you get is the mindless, numbing stupor that you can achieve whenever your blood pressure isn't spiking from the panic attacks. Your consciousness has, for better terms, been deactivated. After anywhere between four to six months, it's possible that your throat no longer has the energy to function, and you choke your last breath out. It is 3 a.m., and you are alone. For the next several minutes, you take in no oxygen until you reach total brain death. This is the end. You... You can rest now. Good night. The disease is called fatal insomnia, sometimes called fatal familial insomnia, and as the second name states, this disease can be passed down genetically. But it is so incredibly rare that, as of 2022, only 37 cases have officially been diagnosed across the world. There have been numerous treatment attempts in slowing down the disease's progression, but to this day, there is no cure. To be diagnosed with fatal insomnia is to be given a death sentence.